Hello, and in this lesson, we're going to continue learning about Amazon S3 by focusing on object versioning, specifically versioning definitions, using versioning, versioning rules, and lastly, since this is the last lesson of this section, we're going to check in on our Project Omega requirements and make sure that we have everything done that we need. So jumping into versioning, what is S3 versioning? Well, S3 versioning is a feature that keeps track of and stores all old and new versions of an object so that you can access and use an older version if you like. Now, there's some very important things to understand about versioning. Versioning is either on or off, and this is done at the bucket level. Once it is turned on, you can only suspend versioning. It cannot be fully turned off, and I'll show you an example of that in a second. Suspending versioning only prevents versioning going forward. All previous objects with versions will still maintain their older versions. And versioning, again, can only be set on the bucket level and applies to all objects in the bucket. So here's our bucket. Let's click on Properties. And we'll open this up a little bit again. And we'll click on Versioning. By default, when you create a bucket, versioning is off. So you have to enable it. So I'm now going to Enable Versioning. Click OK. And as you see here, I can't turn versioning off again, but I can only suspend versioning. But let's go into our bucket and let's take a look here at Project Omega File 1. Now I've updated the file on my computer and we're now going to upload an updated version of this file and see what happens. So I've now uploaded the second version of this file. So now one of the things you should recognize is that up top here, there is now this toggle for version hide or show. Currently it is set to hide, but if I click on show, it is now going to open up this Project Omega file one and show the two different versions, the one that I uploaded earlier in a lesson and the one that I just uploaded in this lesson. Now a couple of things that you should note, one, the previous version was set to reduce redundancy storage class, but when I uploaded the second version, I didn't specify which storage class it should be set to, so it's set to standard by default. So very important to understand with versioning is that just because a previous version has a certain storage class does not mean that the new version will adopt that storage class. But if we look at these two files, I can now take action on either one of these two files. I can download either one of these two files and if I ever have any issues with the newer version, I can always look at the older version as a backup, something I can revert to if I need to. So this is a great way just to kind of have this redundancy, have backups built into S3 by having versioning turned on. Now, obviously, this is going to increase the storage that you use, thus increasing costs. So that's always something to be mindful of. But nonetheless, this is a great feature. So now going back to the bucket level, hmm, well actually interesting here because I have this split screen here and this new toggle is being shown. I guess it kind of squished everything together and I lost my ability to navigate. Um, but if I just move this over here, okay, that comes back. So going back to the bucket level, if I select the bucket and click on properties, for versioning, if I now were to suspend versioning, What's now happened is that the objects that I currently have in S3 will have their previous versions, and those versions will always be stored and made available. However, any new objects that I would upload to this bucket would not have versioning enabled on those new objects. So just as an example, if I go back into the bucket, there is still the ability to view and see versions of the files that were created when versioning was enabled, even though versioning is now disabled. But if I now upload a new object here and then upload a newer version of that object, because versioning is now suspended, versions will not be kept just for that new object. 
So that's a quick overview of versioning, and hopefully that makes sense to everybody. And now before finishing this lesson and concluding this section, let's take a look at our Project Omega infrastructure requirements. So for section four, S3, we needed a location for bulk storage of files. And specifically, we needed one S3 bucket for storing objects. We have that. Project Omega files uploaded to the bucket. We have done that. Versioning turned on for the bucket. Well, we did turn it on, but then I did suspend it. So we'll have to go back and turn that back on before we finish up here. And then lastly, a lifecycle policy enabled to move objects to Glacier after 90 days. And we have accomplished that. So let's quickly jump back over to the bucket level. Go to properties and we will re-enable versioning. Great, so that is now enabled and we can now complete this section and this lesson. So let's again do a quick recap and overview. This was AWS Essentials section four in which we learned about simple storage service or more commonly known as S3. Back to the main page, we have now completed account basics IAM, VPC, and S3. And next, we are going to move on to EC2. So with that, I will conclude this lesson and conclude this section. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.